Hello, this is Rachel from Rainbow Crafts and today I'm going to show you how to do free motion sewing with dissolvable film. If you've got a pack from me, you will have some dissolvable film, an embroidery hoop and a box with a variety of different wools and fibres and a few other bits and bobs to pop on your design. I love the autumnal colours so these remind me of leaves falling so I'm going to do a leaf picture with mine. So to start with you're going to lie out your dissolvable film on your biggest hoop. You're going to lie your film out. I'll just do that. So if you place it over it's a bit slippery but just pop it in. Remember, you can't sew all the way up to the edges when you're doing free motion anyway, because you will use your hoop to move your fabric so your hands are nowhere near the needle. Next, you have to decide what design you would like. Now, as you're going, it needs to be quite thin. You don't want a really thick, bulky picture, so you only want to add it a little bit at a time. So I'm going to have a base, I think of this nice fine a light colour like the ground and then you just pull fine bits off so you can still see through it and you pop it down and you design your pattern. The wool is very good at forming into shapes so if I wanted a leaf you see that's just a any shape I can just fold it into a leaf shape like you were folding a bit of paper kind of like origami but with wool. See now I have a rough leaf shape and what you can do later is sew over the top of it to give it a more defined leaf shape like this. So here's one that I've sewn over the top of the leaves so they're much more defined. So I'm going to have a play with my patterns and put down some shapes. I remembered I had some sparkles so I'm actually going to put the sparkles at the base of my picture because one side is going to be the inside of the bowl and the other is going to be the back of the bowl so you have to remember when you're placing things down how you're going to have both sides to look they though they will both look brilliant when you've done it because when you're sewing with a sewing machine and making pictures when you're picture sewing. If you sew one line and it looks wiggly, if you put another line over the top of it, it will look like it was meant to be there. It's very forgiving. So I've just put a few bits down and I thought I'd show you a few bits I've made before. So these were just random patterns. I've got little stones in it to hold it upright because I have some flowers in it. Make it into a little vase. And this is another example. Just orange and brown. That was going to be a fire. So you can do anything. But if you notice all the stitches interlock together and have a different colour. And there's a few sparkles in it. Or you can do things a little more detailed. This was full of poppies. That's what the funny noise was. It's full of little resin poppies that I made but you can do little dots of colour and they can become poppies but again all my stitching was interlinked and I kept changing the colour of the thread the greens and I signed the bottom so then just keep going with your pattern until you have a good layer oops I moved that one Till you have a good layer on there not too thick remember just a very fine you want to be able to hold it up to the window and still be able to see through it i'll show you when i've got to that point if you decide you'd like something that's not what not one of the colors that you've got you can actually mix a few colors together if you hold so i've got the light brown the orange and a darker brown and if you hold them 
If you hold them quite close together, they don't pull apart. But if you hold them a bit further apart, you find the length of your wool. They all have a pulling point. You don't cut wool because the fibres are quite short anyway on these ones. So you can just pull them, keep pulling them apart, and popping them together again, and then you get a lovely mix of colours. You see it's, and just keep pulling it. So I thought I'd like an, a little acorn in my collection of leaves. So I'm going to kind of make a little acorn shape. I think I've got a bit too much there. So we just fiddle around with it. Obviously you can make any shape you like. You can make animals or trees or flowers or just random patterns. So that's my giant acorn that I'm going to have. So I'm going to pop that over there, I think. And then I'm going to need a little acorn cup. And this one's a bit green. So I'm going to add a bit of brown, I think, and mix those together. Don't forget when you're making yours, you can just pause the video or fast forward it if you don't want to watch all of it. I think that's the good thing about videos is you can just fast forward the bits that you aren't finding interesting and pick the bits that you want to see a bit more of. There we go, and that can be my acorn. Oh, and this actually could be the branch, couldn't it? It's not particularly brown, but that's going to be my acorn branch now, I think. There. Kind of roughly looks like an acorn. That's the good thing. When I stitch over the top of it, it will look a little bit more like a leaf and an acorn because the stitching will bring out the shape. A few more leaves, I think. There we go. There's my pattern of leaves and my acorn and my branch. So now I'm going to use some of my little bits of string and make them go as though they were the veins of the leaves. Got a little bit there. So you just pop them on wherever you feel that would look nice. Remember you're going to sew over them. As I was popping the leaf things down, I thought in autumn there's also a lot of fungi, so I thought I'd do a fly agaric toadstool. If you remember that when you're making it, your bowl will stand up and come up at the edges like this. So anything you put needs to go this way up, unless of course you want it upside down. And then so your patterns go up the edge of the bowl. There, I think I finished my pattern. And then you pop your other piece, your second piece of dissolving film over the top. Give it a little push down. And then put your second loop over the top. Now you want this to be a really tight fit. So give it a squeeze. So I think mine's quite loose, actually. I might tighten mine up before I start just because it's easier. So remember to tighten it up. You just use this bit here, hold on to the nut and just tighten it. There we go. Make sure your pattern is in the middle of your hoop. And then pop it over the top. It doesn't matter if you've moved it a little bit, as in moved your pattern. Because when you're sewing, it will, you will add the stitches and that will make it look amazing. And every one is unique. So I completely moved mine. So I'm just going to give it a little fiddle across. It tends to move all in one go. Look, it's quite handy. Oops. I'll just keep moving it until I get it into the right place again. There we are. And then we try again. And then I'll pop that one down. Oop. 
hopefully that'll be a nice tight fit now. Yep. You can see it's in there. And that's the other side, that one's got the sparkles on. And just make sure you pull out, pull the edges a little bit just to make sure it's nice and tight. The tighter it is, the easier it will be to sew on the sewing machine. This is what it looks like through the window, so it's still quite thin. And now I'll just take it to the sewing machine. So on my sewing machine I've got a embroidery foot and also the feed dogs, these little bits down here, usually go round when you're sewing and at the back of your sewing machine there's a clip, or there can be, that will turn them off so it doesn't automatically feed your material through your fabric. If you don't have one of those and your feed dogs still continue working, I suggest you just sew in patterns so each time go forwards and then stop and then turn around and go in a different direction and you can actually maneuver your hoop quite well when the feed dogs are going through you just have to slowly move your pattern give it a try and see how you go i'm just going to put mine underneath So I tend to start in the middle, so I've got a base of my bowl. So the first thing you want to do is get hold of your thread from the top. I've got variegated thread, but any thread is fine. But remember, you will be able to see both the top and the bottom thread, so make sure they're coordinating or contrasting if you prefer. But just something that goes with, the, with what you're doing. So if you bring your needle down through the fabric and then back up again and then pull up your bobbin thread because if you leave it when you're doing free motion embroidery it will tangle at the bottom and then you'll end up with just a tangled mess underneath. So tuck it behind as you would normally when you're sewing, pop your presser foot down and just do a few stitches just to start. I tend to just go around in a circle so I can see where the middle is and then you're going to cut these bits off just so they don't tangle and then you're just going to stitch around what I find is easier to do is sew out to the edges just so you've got a base like a star shape or a snowflake and then just go to each side, maybe six points. So I'll just do a little bit of that. You remember to hold your hoop while you're sewing. Then you can't get your fingers under the needle. Also, when you're going to the edge, if you're going in the other direction, the foot will get in the way at the back and you won't be able to get close to the edges of your work. So if you get to that point, just turn your loop around. Remember to lift your foot if you do decide to turn around. So I'm going to go back down again. Same place as I was before. Back to my centre. And I'm going to turn it around a little bit, lifting my foot. Remember, it doesn't need to be neat, it just needs to be all interconnected. So I'm going to do a bit more sewing and then I'll come back and show you. As you can see, I've just gone out to the edge around in random places. I completely missed that bit, but because I want to do the toadstool, I didn't want a straight line going through the centre. So I'm going to go round the toadstool now, so I'll put my foot back down. And when you're sewing, you just go round wherever it is that you want. I've done mine quite close to the edge, so I probably won't be able to sew. 
there. Remember to always go around a couple of times in a different shape. Toadstool shape. So I'm just going to go around the circles. I'll come back when I've done that because I know it's quite loud. I've gone around those bits. It's a nice big fluffy bit there. And I'm going to go around my leaves and give them veins as I go. Some people, when you're sewing with embroidery free, hoop, uh, free sewing, they say to change your tension um, top and bottom. But I find it sews quite well without changing anything because I never remember to change it back again. So you just keep going, sewing any patterns that you have or shapes that you want to accentuate. I'll come back to you when I've done a bit more. I've gone around the acorn now and I actually only wanted straight lines going up my acorn but I also know that they have to interconnect so I've kind of done some little lines in between just swirling lines to interconnect everything and then there's lots of spaces in between so what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually turn over because I've got a different colour on the top to the bottom and then I'm going to sew in between the gaps with the other colour. So then one side will be one colour and one another. So I'm just going to lift up my foot and turn my work over. So to turn my work over I actually need to take my hoop and turn it the other way because at the moment it's resting on the other side. So I'm just going to do that. There we go. So you can see on the other side, I've only got the green pattern. So remember, when you turn over, you've got to do your thread again. So put your needle in, pull it up and get the lower thread back through. Just keep pulling. There it is. And then just do a few stitches and cut off those bits. Just going to sew in between the places where I haven't been and I'm going to do just little circles and depending on the colours that you've got you could do a seascape and you could do waves with your stitching or you can do clouds you can pick anything you like or you can do like I said random patterns now to join them together as long as your stitches touch one side so this gap here I've got, I'm just going to add a few stitches in between, touching one side and touching the other, just to make sure they're all interconnected. And I hope you can hear me over the top of the sewing machine. And then this gap here. it is all interconnected so I'm going to carry on connecting all my bits you can see where all the gaps are maybe not quite so much in between the leaves because I quite like just having those as leaves but any bits that are quite big and empty spaces will need some joining stitches you have to excuse my squeaky chair by the way I've just realized how squeaky it is when I'm videoing I've decided I've finished doing my decoration. Oops, cut the thread. So 
Now I'm going to hold it up to the window again for you so you can see what it looks like. So you can see the stitching. And I've gone round and round some bits that I wanted accentuated. So this is what it looks like. Not through the window. And I'm just going to go and get a bowl of warm water to dissolve the film in. First of all, before you dissolve it, you need to decide what you're going to place your sewn item over. So I've got a couple of bowls, so I'm just going to have a look and see how they fit over the top. I think this one might be a bit small, but actually it might come over with a little toadstool coming up the edge. So that might look quite nice, so I think I'll use that one. So then take your work out of your hoop, put in by unscrewing the edge. And there we have your sewn design. And then you're going to pop it into the water to dissolve it. So you know that your film, when it dissolves, has got an unusual texture. Now you don't want to rinse it all out. You want some of it left in so it will keep the form of your bowl shape. So you can see it's kind of a bit gluey. So I've just popped it in and then squeezed some of the liquid out. Stretch it back out again. And at this point you might have bits. I clearly missed that bit all together. So I'm just going to take that bit off. Pop it down there. It's quite sticky. So make sure you've got a towel down. There's my toadstool, so I want that one showing around the edge. So it's going to be quite stiff. I've left quite a lot of the dissolving film in it. I haven't rinsed it out completely. I've just dipped it in and taken it out and given it a squeeze. My hands feel very slippery. Ooh, nearly dropped the bowl. So then you're going to form it over your bowl. So decide where you want the bottom. So look, can you see I can see through it's very thin which is perfect so I'm just going to move my toadstool at the edge now you do have wrinkles and that's good that's okay just make sure that your patterns that you want to see most of are out at the edge often people put cling film around their bowl um, but I don't use cling film because I don't have it in the house I don't find it very environmentally friendly so we don't tend to use it. I just pop it on the bowl and then if it gets stuck, I just wiggle the bowl around a bit. It's kind of a bit like glue. You just have to release it. So there, you keep going round until you're happy with your... Sorry, wasn't under the camera very well there, was it? I'm just pushing it down. I'm going to try really hard to keep my toadstool up, but I don't want all those wispy bits. So I'm just going to tuck them under... They'll kind of glue down there. And when you're happy with your design, then just leave it to dry, usually overnight. But if you've got a radiator, you can dry it on a radiator. I'm just going to fiddle with it. I kind of want to see all my leaves. But you can see your patterns come out really nicely. And I will show a picture when it is dried.